Open the file called Rail Clone Roof Tutorial Start. This scene contains a small building in a simple environment, and all we need to do is add some tiles to the roof. To speed things up a bit, we can use a simple script to extract the splines. It's available in the downloads for this tutorial. To use it, run the script by going to the scripting menu and picking Run Script, and then select Rail Clone Create Boundary Spline.ms from the downloads. Then enter a name for your new spline and hit Return. Pick your first roof plane and then click the new boundary spline button while holding down shift. Do the same thing for all the other roof planes. Holding down shift in this case is the equivalent of using the graphite tools. If you choose not to hold down shift, you'll be creating one closed spline per polygon. Once that's done, we have the splines we need, but we still need to check to see if they need to be reversed. In the scene, there's an object called rail clone arrow. You should apply this to the new spline. This already contains a simple arrow rail clone style. I find it just makes things a little bit easier to visualize. Okay, so there are quite a few that need reversing. So select these and use Max's reverse spline tool to fix the issues. Now we can go to the style rollout and click on the library button. Navigate to the exterior roofing tiles library and pick any one of the roofing styles. Click import selected and the roof style is loaded and replaces the arrows and that's the tiles done. It's easy, wasn't it? If necessary though, you might want to just adjust the spline a little bit to make sure that the verges overhang the end of the roof. You can also choose which materials to use. The built-in styles have nearly 30 to choose from. In the renders from this scene, I've chosen to use material 18, but you can experiment. With that done, let's add the hips. This time we'll hand draw the splines. Disable start new spline, otherwise you can just attach them together afterwards. And then making sure to always start from the same end, draw your ridge paths. So for example, the start of the spline should always be the bottom part of the hips. Create separate splines for the hips and the ridges so that you can control them separately. When that's done, create a new rail clone object and pick a ridge style from the library. And then pick the one of the splines you just created. You can now adjust that ridge using the built-in parameters. Once again, adjust the Z offset to pull the ridge towards the tiles, and you can also change whether the start and the ends of the ridges are capped or beveled. I'm also going to change the material to 18 to match the tiles, but if you wanted to, you could pick something that's different that contrasts instead. And finally, clone this style to create the hips. Assign the new object to the hip splines, and then change the start and the end to beveled. And that's the tutorial more or less done. But it's important to note that these techniques aren't restricted just to roofs. They're also useful for any situation where you need to cover a large planar area. In this scene, we could use the same technique for all the cladding and exactly the same procedures would apply. So first of all, you'd need splines. Well, in this case, I've already used a script to create one closed spline for each planar facade element and they're attached together. Then we need to create a new rail clone object and then open the library and you'll find there are a few cladding styles built in that we can use. There are also macros if you'd like a shortcut to making your own. Go to the base object's rollout and assign the spline to the clipping parameter. And that's all there is to it. The cladding is applied to the whole building. All you need to do now is adjust the parameters, pick your material and hit render. These new clipping options are a great way to create styles that can quickly populate multiple large flat areas with geometry. We've looked at roofs and cladding, but there are myriad other possibilities. If you use these tutorial files or the technique shown in this tutorial for anything, we'd love to see them on our forum. Otherwise, stay tuned for our next tips and tricks instalment or check out our other videos on the tutorial section of our website.